In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to name molecular compounds. Now we've already done one video on naming ionic compounds. And so before we actually get into the steps for naming molecular compounds, I wanna start by giving you some tips on how you'll be able to identify when you are naming a molecular compound versus when you are naming an ionic compound. It's important that you're able to distinguish molecular from ionic because the, the steps that we take for naming molecular compounds are different from the steps that we take when we're naming ionic compounds. So you have to know what you're looking at. A molecular compound is made up of two non-metals. Um, so if you can't remember what the non-metals are, if you go back quite a few videos, there was a video uh, where we were looking at metals versus non-metals versus metalloids on the periodic table. So go back to that video and kind of refresh, um, or maybe they're indicated on your periodic table. When you have two non-metals together, you are looking at a molecular compound. Ionic compounds are a cation or cations with an anion. Typically, ionic compounds are metals, a metal plus a non-metal, but that's not always the case. So this is just um, usually a metal plus a non-metal, but not always. They're always cations and anions together and two non-metals together are molecular. So when you're being asked to name something, the first thing that you should do is ask yourself, is this molecular or is this ionic? And then once you've identified whether it's molecular or ionic, you'll follow the appropriate steps. When we are naming a molecular compound, the first step that we're going to take is to name the first atom in the formula or um, whichever one comes first as we're reading it from, from left to right. So in this example, carbon is the first atom. If there is more than one of this atom, so if the quantity is greater than one, two or more, then we have to indicate what the actual quantity of that atom is. We are going to indicate the quantity using Greek prefixes. And that's all that we have to do for step one. So we just indicate the, the first atom and its quantity using Greek prefixes. Let me slide this up a little bit and we're gonna write the Greek prefixes down here. So for the number one, the Greek prefix is mon or mono. Uh, and I'll talk about when we use mon and when we use mono. For the number two, the Greek prefix is di for three, it is tri for four, it is tetra, five is penta or pent, and six is hexa or hex. So sometimes, sometimes we end up, I'm gonna underline, sometimes we end up dropping the O's or the A's off the end of these prefixes. And again, like I said, I'll go over when we do and when we don't. So here are the Greek prefixes, and these are the prefixes that we're gonna to use to indicate the quantity of the atom. Now we only have to do that if we have two or more of the first atom. In this molecule, which we're starting with right here, we only have one of that first atom. So that means that we just say carbon. We don't have to change the ending. We don't have to indicate how many we have. Um, it's just carbon. And then for step number two, we are going to name the second atom. No matter how many we have, we are going to always indicate the quantity, even if it's only one. And this is always with the second atom, we always indicate the quantity, again, using Greek prefixes. And just like we saw with our ionic compounds, we are going to change the ending of that atom's name to "-ide". So we've seen this changing the ending to "-ide before, it's nothing new. So let's take a look back at this first example here. Our second atom is oxygen, but we're gonna change its ending to "-ide", so our second atom is oxide. But we have to indicate the quantity. We actually have two oxygens. The prefix that indicates two is "-di", 
we put that prefix in front of oxide. So we say dioxide. And again, this um, Greek prefix means that this comes prior to the name of the atom. Just like with ionic compounds, this is two separate words, not capitalized. This is carbon dioxide, which I'm sure you've heard about before. Now here's another molecular compound, CO. This is another version of a molecule that we can form by mixing carbon and oxygen together. And let's practice naming this molecule. Again, we name the first atom. It is carbon. We only need to indicate the prefix uh, or the quantity for the first atom if we have two or more. And since we have one carbon atom, there's no prefix for this at all. Our second atom, again, is an oxide. We always indicate the quantity of our second atom. In the second atom, we, there's one. The prefix for that is mono. Now here's a situation where we do not use the O in mono. We just say monoxide. So when the mono prefix or the tetra or the penta or the hexa, when that prefix is being butted up against an atom that starts with an O like oxide, we're gonna drop that last O or A just to avoid an awkward sounding name. Monooxide sounds weird, but monoxide sounds great. Now the reason that we have to use prefixes to indicate quantity in these molecules names is because there's a lot of variability in the way that two types of atoms can come together. CO2 versus CO, there's two options on how carbon and oxygen can combine. And so the quantities of the atoms are not implied by the name in the same way that they are with ionic compounds. Let's practice going the other way, converting some names into molecular formulas. This is actually really, really easy. So really, we just are going to read the name. Sulfur, molecular symbol is S, and since it just says sulfur with no prefix, we know that that means that there's only one sulfur. Hexafluoride, the symbol for fluoride is F, and the hexa is telling us that we have six of those fluorides. The only way that students sometimes get this kind of mixed up is if they literally read from left to right. So if they go sulfur, hexa, fluoride. And that's the only thing that you have to look out for. Um, remember that the prefix is indicating how many of that atom you have, so that number has to come after the atom. Down here we have dinitrogen. Nitrogen is N and di is the prefix for two. So dinitrogen is N2. Pentoxide, this is another example of how we drop that A instead of saying pentaoxide, we say pentoxide. Oxide is O and pent or penta is the prefix for five. So this is N2O5. And again, the only way that sometimes students mess this up is just by being like dinitrogen pentoxide. No, that's not how it goes. So we do have to do a little bit of, you know, kind of flip-flopping the position of the number in the name versus the position of the number in the formula, but you guys can totally handle that.